assumptions about the perfectly competitive model. A lot of small buyers and sellers, homogeneous products, easy entry and exit, perfect information. How does this translate into what's going on in that, in that marketplace? And to do that, we want to look at two graphs. The first graph is going to show the behavior of the industry. That is, all of the buyers and all of the sellers. Remember, there's a whole lot of buyers and a whole lot of sellers. Lots and lots of them. When we add up all of their individual demands for the buyers, we get a market demand curve, indicating that as prices for the product fall, people will buy more, right? price and quantity. And when we add up the supply curves for the individual sellers, we get an industry supply curve, indicating as prices rise, sellers are willing to produce more. And from that, we get an equilibrium price. Let's make that, just for simplicity's sake, $6. And let's say that the total quantity in the industry bought and sold in any one day or time period is 100,000 units. A lot of stuff. Well, that's the industry. It's going to be important to keep that in mind. But what does this mean for the individual firm, a single company who's selling in this industry? And we're going to assume all of the firms have the same cost curves, okay? That makes it easy. And so we say for the firm, that means that they've got an average total cost curve, an average variable cost curve, remember those? And going through the lowest points of these two curves, what? Their marginal cost curve just the way we've studied it in previous chapters, right? But here's the significant part. For this company, the market price of that product is $6. And this company, remember, they're all very small. The most this company can produce is 100 units per day. That's their maximum output, quantity. Now, they're producing 100 units of output per day in a market where buyers and sellers are transacting 100,000 units per day. So each of these companies, this very low level of production, is very, very small. Remember, that was one of our assumptions. A large number of very small sellers and buyers. Now, what this means for the company, though, is the market price is $6, and they have no control over that. That's the result of the interaction over here between all the buyers and sellers. So when the company wakes up in the morning, they basically look out and say, well, what has the market done? What is my price today? And their price here is $6. And it's $6 for as many units as they want to sell. If they sell one unit, they get $6 for it. If they sell 50 units, they get $6 a piece. The price is constant. The price is given. We call the company a price taker. They take the price as a given. They don't decide the price. The market does. They can sell all 100 units for $6 a piece. And so what this represents is their demand curve. They've got a demand curve. It's a horizontal line. It's perfectly elastic. When you see a perfectly elastic demand curve, you ought to go, whoa, wait, that's perfect competition. There's four assumptions behind that. That's what you want to recognize. All right? So a couple of quick questions and we'll wrap it up. What would happen to this company if they charged $6.01 for their product? How many units would they sell? Remember, the buyers have perfect information. The products are all identical. If this product is more expensive, even by a penny, the sellers, I'm sorry, the buyers are going to know that immediately and say, no, we don't want that one because we can buy plenty of them from all these other sellers. So how many will they sell at a $6.01? The answer is none, zero, nil, no, nothing. So what would we call it if they raised their price to $6.01? Economics term here, stupid, okay? Don't raise your price or you lose all your sales. You with me so far? Okay, next question. What if they decided to get clever and charge a price of $5.99, right? We'll bring in more traffic this way. Everybody will know about it. We'll sell 
more goods at five ninety nine, right? Well, wait a minute, Moose Breath. We know they can sell as much as they can produce, 100 units. That's the most they can produce. We know they sell all of that for $6. Why would they want to sell it for $5.99? They're not going to sell any more than 100. That's all they can produce. So if they charge a price of $5.99 and they sell all 100 units, when they could have charged a price of $6 and sold all 100 units, what do we call that? Another economics term, right? Remember? Stupid. They don't change the price. The price is a given. Their question is, since I can get six bucks a piece, that's going to determine my revenue. And these are the way my costs behave as I produce more goods. What's the best level of output? How many should I produce in order to maximize my profit? And to determine that, we go to the next step. It's called profit maximization using the marginal cost equals marginal revenue rule.